Welcome back to Make It Mental, everybody. What you're looking at right here is a disassembled cordless snap-on drill. Some of you may have seen a video where I complained about the, the shitty craftsmanship or the assembly process of this 760 plus dollar tool plus taxes, right? And it broke on me when I dropped it with a hole saw in it. Right, so there's this. It's still a good motor, still a good two-speed transmission, bearing carrier assembly. Part of the chuck, the square end, fits in turn it to a better light, fits into that square end, right? So that fits into there, like so. Alright, so that's the shaft. And this part right here threads into here on the bottom side. And this screw right here drops down inside and screws into there. That screw, if you should decide to want to do something like this, this screw right here is a reverse thread. It is totally the opposite of what you might think. Normally it's righty, tidy, lefty, loosey. This is the reverse of that. So be aware of that. This is the part right here that I'm primarily after now that I got the motor. And the transmission right here, this is the part that I'm primarily after because I'm going to have to find a way to adapt a three millimeter or turn that into a three millimeter shaft. And I'm thinking if I thread this screw in there, I can turn this down to a three millimeter shaft and put a, a normal pinion gear on there or order a spur gear, which I think is more logical. Order another spur gear. A reduction gear, as I like to call it, and use that as my motor pinion gear, and then that will attach to here, and this will bind the spur gear to it. Again, that's a reverse thread. You can see me spinning it the wrong direction to get it in there. So that's how that works. This motor is absolutely huge. I, it's bigger in circumference than a 775. I've had a few 775 motors before. This one looks like it has ball bearings, at least in the front. I can't tell in the back. Let's see if I can separate. I'll get it separated. Hold on just a second. So there is a front. You can see it's got two little locating pins, plus it's got some screw holes in it. And I'm not sure all what's going on on the inside right here. I can't really tell if there's a bearing in there or not. But if I find out that this motor is too slow to move my Red Cat Racing truck, then I'll have to heat this up and pry off this pinion gear right here because it has to mesh internally with those gears inside there. Right, so that's how they get the gear reduction. That, that pinion gear, this motor pinion gear, sits inside there, spins the other little gears that spin around, 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 and then it turns a bigger gear even slower. Then this mechanism right here engages a secondary transmission, which reduces it even further. I'm not sure I'm going to need all that torque, but I think for the novelty aspect, I want to keep the gear selector there. I don't know what I would do with such a torquey vehicle, but I hate to throw things away that are still in perfectly good working order. So if you guys are curious and you guys want to do something similar, this particular snap-on drill at, from 18 volts, 0 to 500 RPM in low gear and 0 to 1700, for the sake of argument, 1700 and something in high gear. That's at 18 volts. I have no idea what the motor is actually turning, and uh, it could be turning 90,000 RPMs for all I don't know. I have no idea, but it feels very chunky. I mean, it feels very strong when I rotate it with my fingers. It's got a lot of snap to it. I can feel each little turn there. It feels like a good motor anyway, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to use this, and then i got to figure out a way to turn this into a shaft usable to drive the Red Cat Racing truck. So there is kind of a side-by-side. -side. It's kind of hard to tell. It doesn't take up much more space. 
space as far as depth. So it's probably a 775 in depth, maybe. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell realistically at this point because I haven't taken a vehicle apart enough. But by the time I add the transmission in there, the ESC is going to have to go. This, this ESC, by the way, is toast anyway because I, I, I blew it. And so I'm going to have to relocate that. And I'm going to have to do something with with this plastic stuff here. I'm not sure it's all necessary. I think that the servo is secured to the bottom of the chassis, but I made a skid plate on the bottom of this one, so I don't remember. So I think it's definitely doable, and it's gonna be more easy than I thought. And I hope you guys get inspired by something you see here. And again, if you get ready to throw something away, or maybe your brother or sister or aunt and uncle, somebody's getting ready to throw away one of these things, Take it from them, take it apart and see what's inside of it. Maybe you'll be able to customize it for some, some similar application like this one. And we'll see how it goes. And if it's successful, I'm gonna have to take the differentials apart, lock both the front and the rear differentials. And maybe, maybe I say that very, very loosely, add rear wheel steering. Don't know yet, but this is first, get the motor working with it reduction gears already in here.